I first met Dean Nancy Cox when she was the Associate Dean of Research, and I was a brand new Extension professor, thinking of what could I do research-wise that would be relevant to farmers in Kentucky and, frankly, helpful to get me through the tenure process as well. And what I found out was early on, early on, you laugh about that, but that's a big concern for a new professor. <laughs> so, the, uh, the, uh, you don't want to just get hired, you want to stay. So, but what I found in our very first conversation was I didn't have to worry about the tenure part. If we focused on problems and challenges that were relevant to producers, if we tackled that with zest and zeal, then the other stuff would take care of itself. And so what I've found is over the years, in her role as, as in the research and now her role as dean, she has a deep commitment to agriculture, a deep commitment to farmers, and a deep commitment to safely producing food. With that, Dean Cox. Thank you, Chad. You did a good job getting tenure and promotion at UK. <laughs> um, so many people have been thanked. I'd like to thank you all again. Um, for the trust and confidence that a large portion of the ag community placed in the College of Ag, Food and Environment. Um, we like to say that what we practice in a college of um, agriculture is user-inspired science. What that means when you break that down is we want contact with our farmers, with our consumers. We want to know what their problems are, and in turn, we want to develop ways to solve those problems. So user-inspired science, three words that say a lot, and that's what we're trying to do. And I think we're, uh, we have a good record doing that with all the organizations that have supported this center. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb, and maybe, maybe I shouldn't do this, but um, President Capilouto was talking about all the mothers and the fathers. Of, uh, of facilities like this. And I actually thought of a few grandfathers that I might name, and I hope I don't get into trouble for doing this, but two grandfathers of this facility are Don Halcom and Lloyd Murdoch. I think everybody will agree with that. And also, Senator Hornback, grandfather status of this facility, were there at the beginning, Drew Graham and Warren Beeler. And um, they had a special 24-7 um, kind of role in getting this all to happen. So we appreciate all the partners. I was going to go and say the corn growers were the midwife because they bought our land for us. But I, I'm not going to go any further with midwives or babies or anything like that right now. <laughs> but, but we do appreciate the confidence so much. It's been about 30 years since the last renovation of this facility. And um, the people who work here have been referred to earlier. Certainly there are about 14 PhDs and 62 total workers who work here. Um, Mayor Young, you probably have the only 6,000 odd population city that has so many PhDs in it in Kentucky. Um, and, the, and the folks that work on the facilities and on the research projects here, they have to know farming but they also have to be cognizant of the research and extension programs they're doing. So it's like, um, it's, it's, it's farming plus, because it's farming in a way that other people can learn from it. And um, our, our staff is really good at that, as are our PhD extension faculty from a number of different departments. We believe we not only have an excellent facility, we've got the best team in grain and forage in the country. And uh, let's give them a round of applause. So as Chad said earlier, we're relying on the history of agriculture, but our goal is to make each day going forward better than the day before for this region and our customers and um, the whole e Kentucky economy. Thank you very much.